At my baby sister's request, we are going to take her back to black and I thought it would be a good opportunity to share this process because I have had so many clients who have tried to do this on their own and didn't quite get there. My sister is in her senior year of college in Missouri and I am now in New York, so that's why you all haven't seen her on my channel in a while. Okay, let's get started. The first step in this process is to color fill. I am using Ion Demi Permanent to reinsert the pigment that was displaced in previous color processes. I am using 10 volume developer in a one to two ratio, meaning twice as much developer than color. Using a color scale helps measure for accuracy. We are starting with clean hair that has not been deep conditioned or had any product applied in order to allow for full absorption. I am going to apply Ion Pre-Color Treatment to equalize her porosity since the ends are older and more porous now. This will assist the color in processing more evenly. When you have textured hair, it is important to smooth and massage the color through so it distributes evenly. I am focusing this Demi Permanent on the red hair only. This step is called color filling. When you lift your hair, you have something called NRP or natural remaining pigment. Dark hair is made up of eumelanin and the remaining pigment when lifting is red and orange. This is why you often see dark hair process with more orange tones when going from dark to light if it isn't done right. In order to go back down the spectrum, you have to reinsert what's missing. This brown demi permanent will do that without ammonia. I have seen lots of clients with light hair who tried to cover it with black dye, often box dye, only to discover that their hair is not only dried out, but green tinted. A little color reminder from when you were learning your primaries, secondaries, and tertiaries. When you mix yellow, think blonde, with black, what do you get? Green. That is why you cannot simply take black dye and throw it over blonde or light hair. You have to color fill. After all the dye is applied, I will place her under the dryer for about 20 minutes, then rinse and remove with Ion Color Defense Sulfate-Free Shampoo. Then, I am going to clip the hair up and place her back under the dryer to get the water out for the next step. For the full coverage, I am using Ion Permanent Cream in Jet Black with 20 volume developer in a 1 to 1 ratio, which provides maximum coverage. I am using two tubes of color because she has a lot of hair. Before applying the color, I coated her perimeter skin with Ion Stain Barrier Cream to prevent skin staining and make any overflow easy to wash off. I am applying this color from roots to ends and massaging while smoothing to ensure every strand is covered. Because I did color fill before the full permanent color, we won't have to worry about seeing spots of red after processing, and as she washes weekly, the tone will hold better and longer. When the ends begin to show through at some point in the future, it can be touched up with Ion's Jet Black Demi Permanent. Everyone's hair is different, and depending on the porosity, how many oily products are in your regimen, and the water quality where you live, color may last longer or displace faster. I always, always recommend you see a stylist for proper color processing. However, I know that some of you will insist on DIYing it, so I at least wanted to make sure you know the proper way to go about it. Even if you do it yourself, seeing a stylist for consultation will confirm what your hair actually needs. Guessing is a costly mistake and you will be so sad at the price of color correction versus having it done the right way in the first place. If you are gonna tackle this at home, Ion is an amazing Sally Beauty private label professional color system and is much better than box dye. It's formulated to protect the integrity of your hair and provides all the necessary products for processing and maintenance. I am going to let this process for 30 minutes under the dryer and then we will rinse with cool water and shampoo with Ion Sulfate Free Color Defense. The next step is to apply a color sealer. This is an important step that most box dyes miss. Color sealer rebalances pH, 
as it is raised with color processing. It also helps restore moisture and protect against damage and color fade. This can be used in the weeks after coloring and is definitely recommended for those of you who are covering grays. After a couple minutes of massaging this in, I am rinsing with lukewarm water and I will go on to apply Ion's Color Defense Preserving Mask, which replenishes the hair with hydrolyzed quinoa protein, the most complete protein you can have to prevent damage and restore hair. It is important to not overprocess treatments. Manufacturers provide timing on the packaging for a reason. The time stated is often referring to medium porosity, so you can add or subtract time for variances. My sister is medium, so I am going to steam for 10 minutes. After rinsing, it's time to style. Since she only gets straight hair if I'm around and she's here to visit, a blowout it is. I am using the same process, products, and tools I showed you all in my holiday glam video, which I will link below. Now it's time for a haircut. Can't have my girl out here with struggle ends. You all hear me say all the time not to cut your own hair, but let me fully explain why. It's not that I don't think you all are amazing. It's that I don't think you are fully capable. Hair cutting is a science and an art. It requires training. It is based on face shape, angles, and the bones of your skull. How your hair falls is contingent upon the shape of your head and your shrinkage. These are things you cannot account for by randomly snipping ends or by twisting chunks of hair together and cutting the ends. That's wrong. Don't do that. Beyond the technique, you likely do not have a proper tool. There is a difference between shears and scissors. Scissors have angled, ridged blades that cut at an angle. These are mainly used to create texture or if it's a larger ridge, it's just for cutting paper and other fibers. Hair cutting shears have a sharp blade with no angled ridges. If you cut your hair with scissors, you are shredding the hair open at an angle and it will split and travel up the hair shaft, creating breakage within the section. That also leads to frizz and unmanageable hair. To give you a point of reference, quality hair cutting shears are typically made of Japanese steel and cost anywhere from three to $600 and are not available at your local beauty supply store. They are sold by distributors who will require you to have a license to purchase. So if you've been snipping at your ends, wondering why they seem to keep breaking and you don't have any length retention over the months, this is probably why. I love you all and I want the best for your hair. Stop cutting your own hair, beloved. To finish up, I am going to flat iron and then we'll be done. Beautifully transformed from light to dark and baby girl is ready to head back to campus and finish up the school year. If you live in the New York City area and are interested in a service, you can visit me online at monoshair.com slash appointments. If you live elsewhere and want help with your regimen or just have questions about your hair or hair care in general, there is a Skype option on the booking site. You will find links to everything used and discussed in this tutorial in the about section below or by visiting monosehair.com.